my parents that I loved them? Of course, they never told me that they loved me either, which is fine with me. But I, I love you. Do you want some, some wine? Huh? No? It's okay. I'm not in the mood to drink either. But I'm sure I'm in the mood to be alone with you. Oh, God. Why don't we just clear off the table, huh? I think we should go upstairs. I'm not that so predictable. Right, Charles? I ate the divorce papers. <laughs> I ate them with ketchup. They were good. Good. You probably want me to get serious about our divorce. The thing is, you always called our marriage a joke. So let's use some logic here. If we never had a serious marriage, then we can't have a serious divorce. The whole thing is a farce, Charles. A farce that tastes good with ketchup. <laughs> Wasn't it last week your father asked you the reason you walked down that aisle with me? And you said, for the exercise. <laughs> Very funny, Charles. You're a funny guy. I'm not crying. I'm laughing. I'm laughing because you are about to give up on an infinitely lovable woman. Paul, for instance, he's loved me since the eighth grade. Sure, he may be a little creepy, but he loves me. He's made 147 passes at me, proposed 27 times, and has sent me over 200 original love sonnets. He sees something in me, Charles, and he puts it down in me to burst. That's not something you find every day. Somebody who loves everything about who you are as a person. Paul may be insane, but I value his feelings for me. I would never ask him to sign his name to a piece of paper promising to just turn off his feelings for me forever. <laughs> That's what you are asking me to do for you. To sign away my rights to that sweet voice, to those baby brown eyes, to the way your hands feel through my hair before bed. Those aren't things I want to lose. In fact, I won't lose them. I won't lose you. I've written you a sonnet. Shall I compare thee to a summer's day? Thou art more lovely and more temperate. Rough winds do shake the turning buds of May. And I'm not crying. I'm laughing. The whole thing's a joke. I keep waiting for you to say, April Fools, and then I'll just rush into your arms and... You're not going to do that, are you, Charles? No. Of course not. It's not April. I didn't really write this song. Paul did. I think it's good. The truth, the truth is, I hate the divorce papers because I can't stomach the thought of losing you. (laughs) 
no talent? Did you just say no talent? How can you say no talent? I'm going to pretend you didn't say that. What about postmodernism? And appropriations, gender iconography in the late 20th century. She didn't just do yoga, she did Kabbalah, she did burning crosses, she invoked for God's sake. And she did a vita. The Argentines freaked, but controversy fits her whole deal. The tabloids say, Madonna, has she gone too far? But I say, is there such a thing? Is there such a thing when you are Madonna and the world is your oyster? Because you don't let anyone tell you who to be or what to do or what your limitations are. No, no, no. There is no such a thing. To do, boy, you got to be uh-huh. Open your heart to me, baby. Express yourself. Don't repress yourself. Music makes up people come together. Though maybe you and me have a lot in common too. I don't know that yet, but her and me. She and I, we have a bond. <laughs> We're both from Detroit, and that's not all. The list goes on <laughs> and on and on. <sighs> Lots of creative people come from Detroit. <laughs> Like Madonna, Diana Ross, and me, cars are made there too, so you see, we are deeply connected by our roots geography. Okay, this might sound fantastic, but it's true. We were tigers in another life, and she scratched my eyes out, <coughs> but it's okay. <laughs> Newsletters. Let's catch up now. I mean, a funeral is a terrible excuse for a reunion, but we're all here, so have you guys been? Oh, just fine. Couldn't be better. Oh, things are rolling along for me. Oh, same here. Knock wood. Mmm. Knock wood. Oh, it's so great to see you guys again. Oh. Cheers. Cheers. Mmm. <laughs> oh. Why'd she do it? I don't understand. Could I have helped her? What would make her want to kill herself? She gave Jill the best years of her life. Sacrificed her youth. Always put herself last to bolster his ego, his drive, his ambition. Just as her dignity hung by a thread, he ran off with a preschooler. Oh, I'm only guessing. Oh, Elise, you do. Uh, you, Brenda? Brenda? No, Morty was a big shot on TV. He sold electronics on TV. Our 20th wedding anniversary, it hit. Midlife crisis, major. He starts working out, he grows a mustache, he gets an earring. Oh, I said, Morty, what are you, a pirate? What's next, a pirate? Suddenly, I'm a drag. I'm holding him back 
Because I won't roll it later. Huh? What's her name? Shelly. Shelly the Barracuda. She's 12. Great. I'm so sorry about both your marriages. I wish I could have helped or been there in some way. What about your marriage? Yeah. Everything is just fine. Karen is so terrific. Our daughter, Chris, is perfect. I mean, lesbians are great nowadays. The marriage is going. It's going to be really fine. Aaron and I were temporarily sort of... We're a little separated. Separated. <laughs> separated. <laughs> separated. Huh? Separated. Elise, the oh. time has come. Spill. Those lips. What's in them? Are they wax? Oh, excuse me. Oh, come on, you can tell me. What else did you have done? The cheeks, the jawline. Oh. Did you have just a little art now? Fall enchilada? Huh? Oh, I work out daily. I watch my diet. I haven't had a plastic surgery. Oh, good for you. You look terrific. Oh, come on, you. You are lying through your caps. <coughs> okay, I, I, I've been refreshed a little. Oh, God, does it hurt? <laughs> no. The stuff they take off to get to keep? Oh, come on, Brenda. This is 21st century. Plastic surgery is like good grooming. It's like brushing your teeth. Elise, you've been yanked, stitched, stuffed, and pulled. You're a turkey. <laughs> and your ex-husband? No. To please everybody. To please everybody. Men, women, studio executives. Come on, youth and beauty. That's the ticket. Oh. When men, huh? no, when women get to be a certain age. Bravo, I love hello, pop tarts. That's right, baby. It's a holocaust. God, I wish I had the courage to give it all up. Just say, who gives a rat's ass? I let myself go like you two did. Huh? Oh, uh, no offense. None taken. Oh, speak for yourself. Ailey's, you're gifted, talented, and successful. Brenda, you're wonderfully verbal. And I am seeing the very talented therapist. We're in our prime. By the way, my marriage is fine. Thank you. Oh, Annie, Annie, <coughs> you have such an amazing attitude. Oh, you are so mm, cheerful. You are, oh, oh, look at me. You are genuinely happy. It's a beautiful thing, huh? Thank you. By the way, girls, I have Cynthia's letter with me. Oh, oh my God. Oh, my God. I wish I had talent like Elise. Brenda's humor. Or your strength, Annie. Most of all, I wish I still had our friendship. Perhaps Gil isn't the problem. Oh, God. Perhaps loneliness is. Please take care of each other. Love, Cynthia. Oh, God. Oh, God. Poor Cynthia. If only she had called me. Oh, if only I were listed. You know what? She was right. In college, we were focused. We were brave. We couldn't wait. Oh, no. It's all over. I'm alone. I don't have anything. I don't have anything. You have a son who adores you. I don't have anything. I don't have any children. I'm Monique's mother in a movie. Jason, I'll be going to college pretty soon, and then I'll be even more alone. <sighs> Plus, I'll be a lot older. Oh, any more plastic surgeries, I won't be able to sleep. I'll have to work at McDonald's. I'll have to do ads for adult diapers. And I'll have to wear them. I oh. just spent 20 years with a self-absorbed man. Oh, you win. I won't be that woman anymore. It's unacceptable. It is unacceptable. I made all those stupid movies with Bill. I gave him a career. And he stole mine. I worked at Moberty's first store behind the cash register. And his first 15 stores. I gave Aaron a home and a daughter. I even washed and ironed his shirt. Oh, you did it? 
Well, I supervise. <laughs> what do we want, huh? Revenge? No. We're not talking about revenge. No. I'm talking about justice. <sighs> I'm going to give Aaron so much justice, he won't see straight. <laughs> yeah. Bill's always had it easy. He's had it easy every inch of the way. He's always had a woman look after him. What would happen one day if you wouldn't, huh? Then what do you think? Oh, I love Morty very deeply. I would want to see him hurt. You don't. No. I want to see him dumped by little Miss Midrick, that Stairmaster L'Oreal crop jockey, in front of the entire Western Hemisphere on the 9 o'clock news, okay? World peace. <laughs> you know what? Let's get serious. We help them rise. We can help them fall. How are we going to do that? We're has beams, discards hanging by a thread. No, we are not hanging on by a thread. Look, by being, by being together as unity, if all first wives of the world got together, ha, what else do we need? Just one amazing attorney? No. All we need is us, three women who aren't afraid to fight and stand up for our dignity and our self-esteem. And then, we let them have it. See this? Oh, what? what? Put it in there. Oh. Oh. <clears throat> All right. First Wives Club, come together. Yes. Yes. next week. You are more than welcome to join us and if you're interested you can either contact us or the Motion Arts Studio. Last thank you to all of you for making this um, happen today. It's very important for us as a group to be able to communicate with our friends or family, but to also um, contribute to the cause, the charity that we have, Pedico Hamoyelo. So you made it happen. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs>